Welcome to the Pixelmator Pro Masterclass, where I'm going to take you from absolute beginner and show you all of the super powerful features Pixelmator Pro has, and then show you the techniques and skills that you see the pros use every day. So whether you're interested in photography, graphic design, or you're just tired of being ripped off by those <clears throat> other photo editing apps, this series is for you. So to kick things off, go ahead and grab Pixelmator Pro from the App Store and then meet me right back here where I'll walk you through all of the UI, including that first screen you see when you first launch the app. If you'd like to follow along with these project files, they'll just be linked for free in the description below. Let's jump into it. So once you've downloaded Pixelmator Pro, this is the first thing you'll see. Now this panel on the right side is your recent documents. They'll be empty for you because you've never opened any documents before. You can also create a new document, either from scratch or a template. You can open a photo from your Apple Photos library, or you can just browse to any file on your Mac, which is what we're going to do. Now this is where the linked project files come in handy. If you've got those, go ahead and browse to them and hit open. And this is what you'll see. At first blush, this may look similar to other photo editing apps. So for example, over on the left-hand side, we've got the layers panel. Now, if this is new to you, don't worry about it. We're gonna be focused on photography for the first little while, and we don't really need the layers panel. So if this is new to you, you can go ahead and hide it by clicking this button up here. In fact, you can manage most of the UI, showing and hiding elements that you do or don't need by hitting this little arrow. Now, you can also zoom in and zoom out with this little scrubber up here. I prefer to use Command plus and Command minus and Command zero. Uh, those are zoom in, zoom out, and fit to screen. It's just a little bit quicker and easier, and we do it a lot. Now, over on the right-hand side of the screen, this is your toolbar. So these are all of the tools that are available to you to get work done in Pixelmator Pro. Now, although we're going to use all of these at some point, we're gonna spend most of our time in these top three tools. And in fact, most, most of our time is just actually going to be in this color adjustment tool, especially for photography workflows. In the color adjustments tool is everything you need to tweak color balance, brightness, contrast, all of the things that you need to get really excellent photos. But the cool thing is, is that in Pixelmator Pro, these edits are called non-destructive. That means that I can turn them on or off or even update them later without messing up anything else that I've done to the photo. Now these non-destructive workflows are super useful for pros, but they're even more useful for beginners because it gives you the comfort of knowing you can experiment and play around and you're not gonna mess up your photo. And in fact, if you go all the way to the bottom of the color adjustments panel, you'll see we have a side-by-side -side comparison viewer so that you can flip back and forth to see if you like your edits and a reset button if you just think you've completely screwed the thing up. Now, Pixelmator really leans into these non-destructive edits and that includes the effects panel. So for example, if I want to add a Gaussian blur, I can jump in there, I can add the blur, and then I can also go back and make color adjustments and all of these things stack on top of each other without an issue. And I can even turn them back off if I decide, hey, I really didn't like that effect anyway. Now, all of this is really powerful but not every tool in Pixelmator is non-destructive. Some of them are destructive, and that can be a good thing. So let me show you a concrete example of what I mean. So for example, I can come over here and I can use this rectangular selection tool to select part of my image. And there are actually other shapes that we can use if we just long press on the rectangular selection tool, but we're gonna stick with rectangular for now. So if I come over here to my effects panel and I do something like Gaussian blur like the way that I did before, and then go back over to my selection tool and hit the deselect button, you'll see that this actually isn't like the previous effects. Once I hit deselect, if I go back to the effects panel, there's no stack of effects that I can just turn off or undo. And that's because these are applied directly to the selected pixels on the image. For those of you that are more advanced, I can even show you if we come over here to the layers panel, it's not even adding any layers. It really is applied directly to the pixels of this one layer. Now your initial reaction might be, why on earth would I ever want a destructive workflow when I could have a non-destructive workflow that lets me have ultimate flexibility? And let me show you. Let's hit Command Z a couple times so that we can undo everything we did. And I'm gonna show you a really powerful tool called the repair tool. The repair tool is great for cleaning up blemishes in skin, but you can use it to make other things disappear too. In fact, if I hover over the tool, you can see an example, albeit maybe an extreme one, of what this tool is capable of. 
So I'm gonna jump into this image and I'm gonna get rid of these distracting yellow street signs just by painting over them with the repair tool. And you can see they just disappear, which is great. The distractions are gone. But you'll notice, again, there's no stacking effects that I can undo. And if I open the layers panel again, you can see these changes were applied directly to the pixels of this layer. Now you might be thinking, why is that a good thing? Well, it's because if I go into the adjustments now, I can make adjustments and they'll apply to these filled in areas. Now, there is a trick that I can sort of make this a non-destructive edit. If you click the sample all layers checkbox while you're using the repair tool, you can come in here and start painting. And you can see with that checkbox checked, as soon as I start painting, it creates a new layer for me. And the reason why it does that is this tool can sample all the layers in your image and then come up with the equivalent of some cover-up makeup to cover up anything that it sees in that entire stack of layers. And then it puts that in a new layer. Now, the reason why this is now kind of non-destructive is it's in a separate layer, which means I can show and hide that layer if I don't like what it did. But having that touch-up paint isn't always exactly what we want. So for example, if I come back over to my main layer and I start making adjustments, you'll see that new touch-up layer doesn't come along for the ride. And it makes sense, right? Those adjustments are happening on a separate layer from the touch-up. So for the most part, we're going to be working non-destructively, but there are some use cases where destructive edits are really nice because it makes your non-destructive edits work better in the future. And so with that, you have a basic understanding of the layout of Pixelmator Pro. You know where the layers are, you know where the tools are, and you have a basic understanding of destructive versus non-destructive editing, which is gonna be the foundation of all of the videos moving forward in the series. And what you can look forward in the next videos are every single tool on that toolbar gonna to get covered. We're gonna cover all of the AI tools, which are really powerful, and we're gonna cover some of the quick selection and advanced editing and layer-based tools that we just don't have time to and might be a little confusing if this is your first exposure to photo editing software. So if you wanna see the rest of those, make sure you stick around. I'll be linking the following videos in the description below. All right, thanks, we'll catch you on the next one.